And let's bring in Chad Anderson, the CEO of Space Angels, an investment firm focused solely on space ventures, joining us here at Post 9. Chad, welcome. Thanks, Morgan. Good to be here. Let's start with this news with SpaceX and Starlink and this idea of broadband access beamed down from thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, it's something that's been talked about for a long time, and as you mentioned, it's um, no one has been successful to date. But the players that are in it today and that are focused on this are, are of a different caliber, I'd say, and the, the economy, the space economy in, as a whole is in a much different place. So um, SpaceX launching their own satellites is a big component of this. Um, but I think what the most interesting thing that came out of the, uh, the, the press conference last night was really learning that he had the funding for this um, and that uh, his motivations are really to generate revenue to fund his, his starship and his plans to get to Mars. Amazon has basically confirmed that it too is going to be looking to make these types of investments and also potentially build and launch its own satellites for broadband access as well. In terms of all the different potential players in this space, is there room for everybody? Absolutely. And I think, you know, they're targeting a different uh, customer base, essentially, um, and taking a much different approach. So Amazon's approach, you can really see how um, Amazon as an e-commerce cloud, you name it, company, um, is really interested in bringing the other 4 billion people um, online and getting access to them as customers, um, innovators, that sort of thing. Whereas Musk is really approaching this as a revenue opportunity, he's not that interested in um, uh, doing all of this himself. He mentioned last night about working with a strategic telco um, to really help supplement their business plan. Why is space the lens? And kind of a weird question, but you, you've got transportation in space and to space. You, you've got communications in space, garbage management in space, environmental monitoring in space. I mean, these are actually vastly different areas, yeah. different business models, all happening to be in space. Yeah. But why is space the lens that investors should use to invest in these businesses instead of what they're doing and what their model is? Yeah, I think um, uh, a mistake that a lot of people make is when they look at space, they look at it as an industry, as a singular thing, a vertical, but it's not. It's very much a horizontal, and like you said, a lot of the Earth's industry is moving out into space. A great analogy that we often use is um, thinking about GPS and how GPS has enabled the modern global economy. Um, it's what enables our financial markets. It's what enables our, our, our international shipping, um, our airline flights, that sort of thing. So um, the economy today would not exist at the global scale that it does without GPS. And we're starting to see this applied to other areas, whether it's Earth observation um, or the other industries that you mentioned. President's talked about uh, funding some NASA moves to the moon. Yeah. I see there's a Artemis. Twitter account called NASA Moon, and they've yeah. been talking all week about how we're going back. Yeah. So is the private push uh, emboldening them, or are they now at a relative disadvantage because of the private capital? It, it, there, it, there's a lot of interplay there. So there is, um, as you mentioned, the vice president has asked NASA, challenged NASA to get back to the moon in five years. It's a very ambitious, optimistic goal. Um, Unrealistic. Optimistic. <laughs> if you, um, what about with Blue Origin and their new lander? Exactly. I would say that if they were um, only relying on the existing systems that NASA was funding the development of, like SLS and others, then we'd be in real trouble. The fact that they are now more willing and open to working with companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and others um, makes me a lot more optimistic about that timeline. And I think that that was really a gift um, of Bezos coming out and saying that they've been working on this lunar lander for the past three years and has given them a head start. Chad Anderson, thank you for joining us here today at Post 9. My pleasure.